good evening all this is pradeep ram prasad business head at rela consultants llp let me welcome you all for today's webinar on gst series for real estate topic for the day is understanding gst liability in the area sharing transaction joint development agreements in a commercial project i am honored to welcome our speakers for the day venugopal sir rajesh sir and ashika madam I also wish to mention that we are lucky to hear these experts month on month. I sincerely thank these experts for generously dedicating their time each month to enlighten us on applicability on GST in real estate. To start with, let me give my let me give you all a brief on C.A. Venugopal sir. He is a founder partner in Venu and Vinay Chartered Accountants since 2002 with academic credentials which include securing. All India 45th rank in CA final. He is also a certified information system auditor and has completed various other certificate courses from ICAI, namely DISA, course on business valuation, course on internal audit, course on fraud detection, and forensic accounting. He has completed a one year course from IAM on data analysis and business intelligence, has authored various industry specific handbooks on GST has contributed to the technical guide on GST audit re released by ICAI other publication materials. He has developed a lot of Excel-based free utilities on GST like yeah. JSON Reader, Creating JSON Files, GSTN Validator, Composition versus Regular Benefit Analysis, GST Impact Reader, Real Estate Project Switch Decision Analysis, GST Audit work Working Paper Tool, and many more. He is a GST faculty for ICAI and conducted various workshops and webinars. Apart from audits, he also has hands-on on Visual Basic, .NET, Python. He also reviews database design. He conducts various workshops on corporates on use of technology, improve efficiency at work using Excel, building automated reports from accounting and financial application. He is a man behind the development and managing of cloud applications like TaxSmile, Insta Financials, and many more. Now it's the time to introduce our second speaker for the day, Rajesh, sir who is one of the top chartered accountants in practice and partner at Veno and Vinay Chartered Accountants and proprietor of RKTR and Co. He is practicing in the field of indirect taxes at Bangalore for more than 20 years and ad advising clients on compliances, tax planning, and representing to government and authorities. He has authored a number of books on GST, Central Excise, Service Tax, KVAT as an author, joint author, as well as assisting author. To name some of the books, handbooks on Annual, ret annual returns and GST audit, GST retail reckoner, GST tariff, practical guide to service tax, central excise made simple, central excise law and procedures, and KVAT audit manual. He has also contributed for background material on GST and UAE VAT published by ICAI. He has been training the professionals, students, industries, and departmental authorities in the field of indirect taxes on invitation from ICAI, ICSI, tax departments of state and central, educational institutes, trade bodies, professional professional bodies, and many more. Written many articles on central excise, service tax, VAT, and GST for various professional generals. Now it's time to know our third speaker for the day, CIA, Ashika Madam. She is currently holding the position of senior manager, GST department at Venu and Vinay Chattered Accountants, having Achieved Chartered Accountancy in 2013, she has dedicated her professional journey to the interstate realm of indirect taxation. She has comprehensive exposure to the GST ranging from examination of taxability, compliance verification, and adjudication and appeal and representation at all levels. In addition, she has been an active participant, actively contributing her insights to various decisions and topics surrounding GST. Today, from these three experts, let's learn more about landowner liability, ITC availability to developer and landowner, development right taxation, GST liability on project completion. So now I request Venu sir to take over from here. Uh, thank you, Pradeep, for your kind words and introducing. And uh, I welcome uh, Rajesh sir and Ashika for the session. Uh, friends, it's been a privilege that we are continuously doing uh, this session on the knowledge update. The important point in real estate, for many it appears to be simple and for many it appears to be complicated and it would be like a revision all the time, right? The point here is how many of you have 
attended regularly or attending for the first time, I would only request that you should attend these sessions regularly. One, it is kind of revision. Law is evolving. And we as a professionals, day to day, we are also getting updated from various uh, aspects, right? So it is very important that we stay tuned. You know, whatever the position that we would have taken on, say, let's say 25th Jan 2018, after a notification that was uh, uh, surpassed and suddenly 4 oblique 2018 has come. Later, April 19, some views have come. Then we have circular 177, some views have come. So the, even the position of the faculty do get maybe enhanced. Like after when, when the matter of Prahati constructions, which was in high court of Telangana, most of the people or experts viewed that there cannot be any development right and the matter got admitted by the high court. But once a judgment had come, then they were like, yes, maybe it is taxable. So I would only urge people that we should constantly be in touch with the subject. Right? And today, what we are going to talk is on the government in a commercial aspect, uh, your points as we discuss along. So, friends, what we are going to do today is the commercial property and area sharing. Now, in an area sharing, there could also be a situation most of the times, uh, unlike a residential project, the intention of the landowner and the builder is to complete the project, sell off all the units, wash off and uh, move on to the next project. But unlike in a commercial property, the chances of the property after being developed, being retained and let it out is substantially higher vis-a-vis -a, -vis a residential property. Generally, commercial properties could be on a lease models or commercial property construct and hand it over to the, uh, the prospective buyers. Right? Both models do exist. We would look at what happens if a unit is sold, what happens if a unit is not sold. We would look at all those aspects. Uh, just to give a recap of various supplies that happened in a joint development agreement, I'm sure all of you have been seeing this screen consistently from many days. But let us recapitulate. There is nothing change that would happen even in a commercial joint development agreement. While in a joint development agreement, the predominant of the activity that is happening is a landowner allowing the developer to enter the property premises, develop on that land. So that means the first and foremost service that is being happening is this landowner permitting the developer to develop. So that means that the landowner is selling a development right. The right this landowner had on his land, the ownership of the land is with the landowner and the right to develop is with the landowner. This right to develop is foregoing and giving it to the developer to develop on this land. That is the first supply that is happening. Though it was not recognized as a supply and it was treated at par with the sale of land, which I generally differ, and uh, uh, this is independent. Now, we also have to see the underlying asset which is being transferred is the land. Now, the land which is getting transferred is not at the first leg. So, if you see, we have broken the whole of the transactions into multiple legs. So, at the first instance, the landowner is only giving the development right. In lieu of such development right, which is the supply A, the landowner is getting the supply B from the developer, which we call it as a construction service. So there are two supplies happening, the landowner being supplying the development right. One minute, let me just mute other literally.
I've just muted everyone. In case just anyone wants to unmute, you can raise the hand. Feel free to put your question in the chat box. We will take up the questions. Right. So in lieu of supply A, the supply B is received. While this is at the stage where the units have been constructed or during the course of construction. The landowner and the developer during the course of construction, they have right to sell the portion of the units belonging to them. While the landowner is selling to the independent buyers ABC, and we are now titled it as supply C, where the constructed portion of the apartment so the uh, apartment is used in the residential context. Even in a commercial context, it is a commercial apartment, so commercial unit. So if we look at any of the uh, market area, where you'll find a lot of shops, shop one, shop two, shop three. Some of the shop owners are uh, buyer, they bought those shops. Some of them are under the lease with the original builder, whatever. So there would be multiple shops, and this is not just with a uh, in a market area, but even in kind of uh, any any of the commercial uh, places, you can see a uh, three thousand, four thousand uh, square feet uh, apartments also, which is a commercial apartments coming into say five ten uh, buildings, including moving as high as the SZ parks where there are developer who are coming. Now these could be a sold to a third party or retained by the suppliers, which is the landowners and the developers, right? So today we will see the impact in both the scenarios. Generally, as I said in the beginning, in the commercial, the retention by the both the landowner and, and the developer are high for further transfer, uh, for the further let out to benefits that, the, that the, which has a higher value, right? Nevertheless, let us look at the taxation of each of the elements. We'll start with the element one, which is the development right? And as we see, we will also do a small illustrations. Now, the supply one, which is the development right? Here, I have multiple facets that I've brought in. Firstly, this has to be paid by the developer under RCM at 18% at a value of value of units and there is an exemption under 12 oblique 2017 and the taxability under 11 oblique 2017 in entry 16 3 real estate services right now how does we deal with this in commercial thing but before we get in we have to understand certain basic things as to what this development right is how do i value this is this value the valuation justified who has to pay this development right? And when do I pay this development right? The basic, any basic ingredients of taxation needs to be understood. This development right is new. This is there coming from the service tax era. Now, as I said, this is a right granted by the landowner to a developer to carry out the development activities which is on this specified land. Now, this is not an immobile property. This is not a Schedule 3 entry. It is a supply of service. Under GST, the supply should be either classified as supply of goods or supply of service. Development right is classified as supply of service, HSN 9972. This is something one should be very mindful of. Now, was this there earlier? Answer is yes, this is not a new. It was there earlier also. I was told the development right was exempt after the new regime. Again, the answer to it, yes, there is an exemption entry in the notification 12 oblique 2017, entry 41A gives the exemption. But however, this exemption is the service which is happening by way of transfer of development right for construction of residential apartments. So, the development right for construction of residential apartment is exempt, while the development right for construction of commercial apartment is not exempt. So the tax treatment and applicability would be different 
and the notification 12 oblique 2017, which is basically 4 oblique 2019, is not applicable. Is not applicable for a commercial transaction. So, in a commercial transaction, there is no exemption to the development right. Whole of the development right is applicable. As we have seen in the earlier sessions, where the development right is exempt to the extent of the sold units by the developer. So the development right was tagged only to the extent of unsold units in a residential project, while in a commercial project, the development right is fully taxed and there is no exemption. So having said that, what is the value on which this needs to be paid? So the same notification 4 oblique 2019, where it has amended 12 oblique 2017, where they have said, what is the value? The explanation 1A, they have given the value of supply of service by way of transfer of this development right shall be the value of the apartments, value of this residential or commercial apartments. It could be residential or commercial apartments. So let me just highlight this portion. So it is residential or commercial apartment. So whatever is the consideration in the form of residential or commercial apartments, that will be deemed as the value of the development right. Now, please note, if we today we are talking an area sharing, so we will come to revenue sharing in some other session. So in an area sharing, we are saying the value of the development right is value of this commercial apartment and it is a deeming provision so the government by virtue of 15 oblique 5 uh, the 15 subsection 5 they also have power the notifications can be notified using that power giving a deeming fiction for the value given this is a barter so to find out the value of the barter the value can be referred to any other uh, a, like a precisely valuable reference. In this situation, the government has treated the valuable reference. So the developer has received the development right. Landowner has given the development right. So the value of the development right given is equal to the value of the units the landowner has received. So the value of the commercial units that they have received. We can also draw the similar analogy from the service tax regime which also clarified by way of circular 151 that the development right should be equal to value of the similar flats charged by the builder or developer from the independent buyers. Right. Now, who has to pay this development rate taxation? Because the supply is by the landowner. The supply is by the landowner. Even though the supply is by the landowner, the liability to pay GST on this development rights by the landowner to the developer is grossly under developer. So hence it is a reverse charge mechanism. So the recipient of service has to pay the GST on it. So the notification 5 oblique 2019, which has clearly said the services supplied by transfer of development right shall be paid by the promoter. So the developer who is receiving the, de uh, the uh, development right shall be paying GST on it. Before, uh, uh, yeah, the last thing which you also need to see, the time of supply. Now, we, we have seen the that is a, it's a supply, supply of services. And we have also seen at what value, what is the rate of tax, the entry rate of tax is 18%. So HSN 9972 and who has to pay? The last ingredient is when it has to be paid. It is a supply agreed to be made. So at the time of the joint development agreement, the supply is happening. However, for the projects commencing after 1st April 2019, the development right is applicable at the time of issuance of completion certificate or the first occupation in the project, whichever is earlier. So the government, by virtue of the special power they had, they have issued a notification 6 public 2019 where they said a promoter who is receiving the development right and all the points and said the liability to pay shall arise on the date of issuance of completion certificate or the first occupancy, whichever 
see earlier. This is what the development right taxation is all about. We'll just look at a simple demo Excel and we'll come back here. So when let me just uh, take a simple example. In as I prepare a simple example, request Rajasar to add if something is required. Let us take a situation. There is a land area of one lakh square feet, and uh, we can say the landowner share is uh, uh, forty percent, and developer share is uh, sixty percent. Right. So, the landowner is getting uh, forty thousand constructed SFT, and developer is getting sixty thousand constructed sixty thousand constructed SFT. Right. Let us say number of units right, is uh, 4,000 uh, per SFT. SFT per unit. Let us just I hypothetically say so number of uh, units in the project would be 1 lakh over 4,000. So 25 units and landowner has to get 25 units means 40% of it. So into 0.4. So, which is 10 units and developer is going to get 15 units. Developer is going to get 15 units, right? So, what are we saying? So, the development right taxation. So, the development right value is value of unit by value of the unit by received by landowner. Value of the unit received by landowner now landowner has received 25 units so if you look at again i'll go back to the valuation again the valuation had clearly said that in terms of the value of the development right it is value of charged by the promoter from the independent buyer from the independent buyer nearest to the date so whatever is the first sale date, if at all, it happened. Now, the challenge that also comes in that in case of a lease for a transaction where these units are not sold, you can adopt whatever is the rate of these units fixed by a sub-registrar for registering these units because that is the market value. So let's say market value, market value, Per SFT, I will put it as let's say as hypothetically we will take it as say, let's take eleven thousand, right? Now per unit price would be per unit price would be eleven thousand into four thousand SFT. So which is four point four crores is the value per unit, right? And uh, number of units landowner got is ten units. So, development right value is 4.4 into 10, which is 44 crores. And GST applicable is 18%, 44 crores into 18%, which is 7 crore 92 lakhs. This is 7 crore 92 lakhs payable by, payable by developer. on OCD, right? Or you can say on or before the OCD. Is ITC available? Of course, in a commercial project, ITC is 100% available and the developer gets the input tax credit of this development, right? For the further sale, whatever he is doing in this transaction, right? So this is all on development, right? So any questions to anyone, you can put your questions. Let me see in the chat. If there are any questions, you can put your questions on the chat. Else we can move to the next. Rajasar, is there anything that you would like to add here? Nothing as of now. Uh, at the end, I'll just uh, supplement some of the things. That's all. Sure, let's see. So we will move to the next aspect, which is supply B construction services. Now, what Excuse is Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Sir, questions are in the chat box, sir. There are questions in the chat. I didn't notice any questions. So what happens if it is an hybrid hybrid project? 
and another question is rcm by a developer to be paid on agreement date or cc date it is on the uh, on or before oc date okay in a mixed project we'll come to the end but i'm not seeing okay. anything in the chat maybe they have personally posted to you let's see that no problem and another question is what happened if it is an hybrid project uh, can you just copy the question and share it to my window and request everyone to pu put questions to all uh, the group chat so that uh, I can also pick up that question. No problem. Yes, sir, yes, sir. I will forward the question yeah. to you, sir. So let's move to the next part, which is Supply B Construction Service. Now, the Supply B Construction Services is the landowner who is providing, he is receiving in lieu of the development right, constructed yeah. units. Again, the explanation in 11 oblique 2017 central tax rate. Uh, this has given a definition in explanation 2A where it says the registered person who is transferring the development right, the landowner who is transferring the development right to promoter in the form of construction of apartment, the value of construction service of such apartment shall be deemed to be the total value charged to the similar apartment in the project to the independent buyers nearest to the date of that joint development agreement. Of course, it is construction services. Hence, less the value of the transfer of land, if any, prescribed in paragraph 2 above. The paragraph 2 says where there is a consideration both for the land and the development, the value of the land shall be deemed as one third. So the consideration for construction services is deemed as two thirds. That is what we have to look at. It. So this is uh, supply B. Let's go back to Excel. And in the same thing, now we have seen the development right taxation. Let us now see construction service taxation. So when it comes to construction, service. So developer has constructed to landowner. He has constructed 25 units. He has constructed 25 units. So value per unit. We have seen the value per unit here is 4 crore 40 lakhs. So total value is 25 into 4.4 .4 crores and here the did we miss something oh sorry the construction uh to the landowner is only 10 units so he has provided 10 units to the land yeah so the total value is 44 crores what is taxable is the construction service so the value of land is deemed as one third so land is deemed as one third. So construction service service would be balance, which is two third. So 44 crores minus 14 crores, 29.33 crores. The GST rate is 18%. This is at 18%. So 5 crore 28 lakhs has to be paid. 5 crore 28 lakhs has to be paid by the developer, by the developer. Now, this is collectible from the landowner subject to the commercial agreement, which is the joint development agreement. Now, whether or not it is collected from the landowner, the obligation to pay this tax is on the developer. Now, this 5 crore 28, can he utilize the input tax credit he has? Now, he has an input tax credit of 7 crore 92. Can he use this 7 crore 92 and pay this? Answer is yes, absolutely yes. The RCM liability is alone should be paid in cash. Rest other liabilities can be paid using the input tax credits that the land the developer has. So the whole of this 5 crore 28 lakhs, the developer can definitely pay using the input tax credit this developer has, which is coming from the development right taxation. So this is on supply B, uh, which is the development, which is moving to the supply C. 
which is uh, the ta taxation by the landowner to the end customer. Taxation by the landowner to the end customer. Now, in the supply C, if you see, there is a landowner who is uh, receiving this constructed apartment. Now, he can also sell this and he can also utilize the input tax credit. So he will be paying at the rate. Effectively, we always say the 12%. He is effectively, he will be, he can also utilize the input tax credit, which he is getting from the landowner and he can pay. Yeah. So the construction service, which is built by the developer, the ITC can be taken and the landowner will collect and pay 12% or which is 18% into two thirds and the ITC ledger can be utilized by the landowner. So if these units are sold, let's go back to the Excel. Let's look at a demo of this again. Let's look at the demo of this. Uh, let me take you to the Excel. Let us now move to the next aspect, which is sale by landowner. Let us say, the units received by the landowner is 25. If let's say sold before OC, let us say some out of this around 18 units are sold before OC and let us say average sale price. Now, since the JD date sale price was four and a half crore, we can say as it is getting sold, it there will be an appreciation to it. So the say average price, I will let us increase it to some 20%. So average is selling at 5.28 crores. So what would be the sale value? The sale value would be obviously 18 into 5.2. So the GST applicable. Okay, firstly, he has to uh, one third land deduction is applicable to him also because what is sold is construction service. So construction service, which we call it as Taxable value is 950 minus 516 and the GST on this 18% is six, this into 0.18. So the landowner has the liability of 11 crore 40 lakhs. The landowner has the liability of 11 crore 40 lakhs for him to pay GST on it. Now, so the landowner has received only 10 units and request. So let's say he sold eight units before the OC. Yeah? Now two units are unsold. So average sale is this. So sale value 42 crores. So one third 14, taxable value 28 crores. GST applicable is five crores, six lakhs. Now he has an input tax credit. So can he use the ITC? The answer is yes, the ITC can be used. So the ITC, how much he has? He has 5 crore 28. The, he has received uh, 5 crore uh, 28, 28. He gets somewhere, some math is not fitting or... Huh. He has 5 crore 28. He can use the whole of the ITC while discharging the GST liability. Now, rule 42 is applicable to him. Rule 42 is applicable to him. Rule 42 says the exempted carpet area divided by the total carpet area. So, he also has to reverse the ITC. So, 5 crore 28, the exempted carpet area is the two units. So, two units into, uh, which is uh, two units over 10 units, right? So, he has an obligation to pay 1 crore 5 lakhs by way of reversal by way of rule 42 this is how the taxation for the landowner would happen when he is making further sale to the end customer now moving to the last aspect which is the supply d which is sale to end customer now when there is a supply which is happening the sale to end customer so the landowner is uh, com has completed his sale the developer is making the element of supply, which is the last select that sale by the developer. The units which have which he has received, these units he is again pay, selling to the end customer. Now, even this is the same treatment. Is a, it is the same thing where 
the developer has the liability to pay GST at the rate of 18%. Now, again, he has an ITC uh, uh, input tax credit he, he is having. He is eligible. He, ITC ledger can be used. The ITC ledger can be used in making the uh, payment of So the ITC ledger credit can be used for making the payment of this. Let's look at the taxation in the last leg also. Let me move to the Excel. Now let's look at this aspect. Let me just recreate here. Uh, sale by developer. So he has 15 units. And let us say he has sold 12 units. And let us keep the average sale price as the same. So he has 63 crores. One third uh, is land deduction. Taxable value is 7 crores. ITC is available. Now let's see how much ITC he has. He already had originally an ITC of 7 crore 92, of which he has utilized 5 crore 28 for paying towards the construction services. So he has a balance ITC of 2 crore 64. That means he still has to pay 764 minus 264, which is 4 crore 96 by way of cash. Or for the purchase of steel cement, whole of the construction, he has an ITC. He can use that ITC also. Now, even for him, rule 42 is applicable whole of the ITC, development rate ITC and other purchases ITC is split in the ratio of the 12 and 15 for the three units which are left unsold for the developer, he would be reversing this by way of the input tax credit at the end of the project, right? So these are the various things we have, uh, we have seen and we also uh, looked at the Excel for the practical uh, purpose of it. Now request Rajesh sir to give his views before we look at any of the questions. Venu, you know, I think uh, the essence of this entire transaction of a commercial thing yeah. uh, has to be seen in overall like uh, any other works contract because the full ITC is available and output tax is at the rate of 18%. Correct. Uh, the complication arises in case of a joint development arrangement where there is no dispute or no issues with regard to tax payable to the customers before sold, I mean, sold before OC. Similarly, for the alleged or sorry, implied supply or a service said to have been made by the developer to the landowner, also like a works contract at 18% and with ITC. So Correct. they're not practically from a business perspective, it will not have much of the issue because I have to anyhow pay tax and ITC is eligible. But only the issue which comes up is on the valuation part. Valuation is a issue which there's a lot of issues going on. I think presently the notification has given some formula Everybody is adapting. But let me tell you practically what happens many a times in a commercial project, there may not be a sales. There right. will be a internal usage. That is, both of them will construct and rent it out. It will be constructed for leasing. So in that scenario, there will be a little of a complication for valuation as well as many of these provision applicable. I think when would address this, I think, in the course of your the discussion i don't know um sir we, we are taking the uh then in the next session the other aspects we are today we are only restricting it to the uh the commercial uh area sherry and yes, uh, i don't wanted to i didn't want to load too many concepts in one session yeah, that only... is by session by session we are implementing Correct. but Correct. i would leave the session at this point and i will open the floor for the people to ask Correct. questions and then, we can take the questions. Yeah, only I would just like to add in the area sharing also, there can be a situation where it is sold, it is not sold. Now we are addressing only when it is sold. We are not addressing when it is not sold. 
I will put it this way in the example that we have taken, sir. We have like three units left for the landowner, some 12, uh, two units left for the, la la the developer. Could be, it could be 0, 10, 90, 10, 10, 80. So it's just an Excel number. So instead of putting uh, uh, 12 and uh, 3, I could have put it as 0 and uh, 15. So I would say the taxation would continue from the structuring perspective. Can it be structured better? Can we avoid the development right? The discussion could be, uh, uh, it could be a different thing because the underlying treatment is, though Rajesh sir clearly mentioned, it is a works contract similar arrangement. Because it's a joint development arrangement, the development right taxation and other taxation rights. Now, why, when someone is not selling, why? what is the intention? Why are they not selling? They want to keep it for their own use and they want to let it. Now, when it is let it, it is for commercial use. So you may argue, why can I not take the input tax credit? Because the essence of letting out is the building and building cannot come out unless we do the construction. Whole of construction activity is only for the commercial exploration purpose. Why the input tax credit should be blocked or reversed? Why should I apply rule 42 this as an exempted uh, area? Why should I apply, treat this under 17.5 C and D that for it's a self usage? Now, friends, we, we are all these aspects in the next session, madam. Exactly. So we will take it up in the next session where uh, 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 what would be the tra tra transaction of it. But people who might want to know about the uh, safari uh, retreat case, again, the uh, it, it happens with the Supreme Court. It hasn't come up from last six months. And uh, likely now the bench is changing. Maybe it may come up for a new fresh hearing once again before it is uh, order is passed. So when the matter is with Supreme Court, we cannot say what is the outcome of it unless we really uh, hear from the judges. Mode. So I will rest the discussion at this point and allow the participants to put your questions so that we can address that and uh, uh, dwell upon these concepts and come back with a revenue sharing and other aspects in the coming session. Sir, when is the participants. Sir, uh, we can now allow them to unmute and ask uh, Vishwas. Okay, sir. Sir, some of them have asked the questions I have shared through WhatsApp, sir. Yeah, you have shared it in the chat. Let me pick the questions. Uh, there's one question. How GST, how does the GST work for developer when developer enters into a barter with the subcontractor? Bulk units are only entered into sale agreement and not sale deed executed. Now, it could also be a situation like even this, uh, uh, the developer got the development right by way of barter. He developed and given to the landowner. Now, in the example that we have seen, out of 25 units, 10 units went to the landowner, 15 units are with the developer. Now, the question is, developer, most of the time, he also subcontracts the work. Let's say he has uh, given it to someone or in lieu of the steel, cement, which other things which he has procured, he has no ability to pay back the money to them. So he has given one unit, two units to his subcontractors. What does happen then? So even when the builder, he is giving these units as a barter, the builder is getting an input tax credit. He should treat them as a sale. Now, this barter is entered by way of a sale agreement. And at the time of the sale deed, which is happening definitely after the OC, since this is also like a barter, the GST would be applicable for <coughs> and uh, the GST has to be discharged. Any other questions? Sir, few questions are there from our clients. Sir, uh, explain the landowner sold some of the units from his portion. What will be the impact whether developers has to pay on uh, full was, amount? Can you copy them and put it in the chat? Somehow I'm unable to see any of these questions. Sir, I have shared through WhatsApp, sir, for you. Uh, would it work for you to put it in the chat instead of me? In the yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. I can see uh, Nagra has unmuted himself. Do you have any questions, sir? Uh, 
there's one question from Raju. When will you do a session on land development, JDA project? Uh, plot development, uh, Raju sir, we did a session. Uh, we will again take up the session once we complete the commercial and mixed projects. Mm -hmm. Uh, please explain if landowner sold some of the units from his portion, what will be the impact whether developer has to pay on full amount or balance portion of landowner share? Uh, sir, I think you are you're confused with the uh, transaction aspect. I would request you to go back to the original uh, slide. And also, this is one request to everyone. Generally, whenever you are asking any questions or uh, I would like you to be specific. Now, there are questions sometimes come to me. Sir, is GST applicable to the landowner in a joint development transaction? Now, you know, if you see on the screen, there are four different supplies that are happening. Which is the supply you are talking is always important. You know, then you will get an idea as to what are, what is the question. Now, you back of the mind, you might want to address supply A, but unless it is specific, we cannot, right? So, I would say your question is incomplete. Uh, next, what happens if the JDA is entered after 1st April 2019 and developer cannot claim ITC? Uh, question from OPPO CPH. Sir, for commercial transaction, ITC is fully available. There is nothing, uh, uh, no ITC. I'm talking about the transactions uh, JDA entered after 1st April 2019. So... All right, so whatever the questions which are clear, we have taken it up. With regards to the residential units, uh, I would request you to just look at our earlier sessions. We have taken last four sessions was only on the residential. Uh, what would be the taxability before 2019 notification? Uh, so before 2019, the taxation is same. So with regards to the commercial, the 1st April 2019 hasn't changed anything. It's only 4 oblique 2018, which received on 25th Jan 2018, has only given the deferment of the time of supply. So that's the only change. Otherwise, commercial transaction, I would say, same before April 19 and after, after April 19. In case landowner is unregistered, uh, what we can do? Landowner is unregistered. You as a developer, you have an obligation to pay GST. Ideally, you should, in uh, in the good need, the landowner should get registered because he will get the benefit of ITC. Of course, in a project, we he intend to give it on lease. It doesn't really matter for him. Tanya Agrawal is asking, can you please explain rule 42 reversal for ITC for developer again? Uh, uh, Tanya ji, developer has paid development right in cash. All the procurements for steel cement he has purchased. So A plus B he has done. By the way, 80% uh, rule is not applicable in a commercial project. It is applicable only for residential project. So 9 subsection 4 is out of the question. Now, these two things which has been purchased, the ITC is available. This ITC is available for whole of the project. Now, out of this 25 units, we have seen 10 units are sold to the landowner. Balance 15 units, 13 units are sold to end customer. So two units are left. So the developer has to reverse the input tax credit to over 25 for the total ITC, including development right, including the forward charge procurement, he has to reverse the total ITC on the completion of the OC date. Just in case if the ITC got utilized for any other liability and there is no ITC, he will be paying that in cash. All right, so all the questions that we have received, we have addressed. There's one by Nitesh Shetty. What is the basis of valuation of TDR? Is it based on the units allotted to the landowner or the total developed area? Generally, development right is transferred for entire project or can say for the builder portion. The development right is transferred for the entire project. In lieu of this development right, which is given, the landowner has received constructed units. 
So the value of the constructed units received by the landowner is the value of the development right. Well, I would like to add at this point in time. Yeah. Okay. Since a lot of participants are there in the session. Uh, actually, the question is very, very apt. Uh, there is no mechanism which is clearly set out for a valuation of a development right. However, a notification has given a deemed valuation which need not be the actual, which has been set out in the notification. Uh, to give a practically, the value of the development right may go beyond the value of the land itself many a time. So that is not statutorily acceptable proposition. So somebody who doesn't want to take a litigation, you know, don't worry too much. Just go with the notification explanation given and try to take that and merely follow what was told, explained by when. If somebody wants to really take a litigation because the customer is not paying, it is going to cost, it is going to increase the cost of the project, my existence is in question, it is project is not viable for various reasons, whatever it is. If you are thinking so, you can take up a litigation, but we do not know what will be the outcome. But our gut feeling is, the methodology of a valuation of a development right presently set out is uh, extraneous uh, with more of revenue zeal for the government. So it is not supposed to be in that manner. But we have to wait for the courts to come out and give a relaxation if they want to. That's all I want to just add because uh, many of people, if you simply say that it is the same, the others may be telling a different view. Why the others are saying is for this reason. But we, in the session, we generally try to keep the issues less, I mean, more conservatively, less litigative. So that is because uh, we do not want somebody to take up a litigation because we, merely because that we are told something. So that is the objective of this session. When you want to say, say something on that, you can say. Right. So I also want uh, uh, people to appreciate upon now there is a I am I will give you a, another uh, perspective. Now, how do we look at uh, uh, this? All right. Let me share the screen. I'll give you a simple uh, example uh, because this is a question that people always uh, ask and uh, I also want people to really look at the another perspective of the development right taxation. Let me just zoom this. Let's take the same, same situation. One lakh SFT and I'm saying landowner got 30,000 SFT, developer got 70,000 SFT, constructed area. SFT value is 10,000. What we are saying is the value of the units the landowner got, which is 30 crores, is the development right. So, assuming I am the landowner, you are the developer. Now, you may say, as the developer, what did you get? You got 70% UDS, is another way of saying, right? Now, what is the value of the 70% UDS? The 70% UDS, like at 10,000 uh, SFT, it is 70 crores. The UDS value is 23 crores. The UDS value is 23 crores. So the value of the development rate could also be said as 23.33 crores. Now, this is kind of a connected and there could also be a break-even point. Like uh, ideally, when I did the, uh, I did a lot of working. So at 25% actually is a break-even point. If you look at it, 25%, the value of the SFT, again, it is this, so development units is this. I will con I'll converse it. Let's say 20%. Let's say 20%. Now, if at a 20%, the development rate value is 20 crores, as against the UDS value, which is 26 crores. Now, this change would happen. This change would happen depending on the area, depending on the percentage the landowner is getting it. Because the value of the units is the UDS plus construction service. UDS is one third, construction service is two third. 
Now we are multiplying on one side the portion, the right the landowner has got into the UDS plus construction service. And we are comparing with the one minus the landowner uh, area into only taking the UDS value. So they both can, both, this since if you substitute with a mathematical equation kind of X, the break-even point in this situation is the 25%, right? So uh, you, is this value right? What is the right way? Since it's a deemed valuation, we have to go with the value given in the notification. All right, uh, Pradeep, uh, thank you for uh, hosting the session and uh, continuously bringing different uh, facets of the GST in real estate, different type of transactions. Uh, I think uh, we should definitely appreciate the RERA Consultants LLP for con continuously uh, putting up the sessions and uh, bringing the GST knowledge to the participants. Thank you, Pradeep, and uh, special thanks to Rajesh sir for uh, bringing the different perspective to the same, uh, the definitions which are there in the notification. Yeah. So with this, we come to the end of the session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Dear participants, I thank you for your active participants and special thanks to our speakers for giving us their valuable time and insight on today's topic. Hope the session was informative and knowledgeable. If you have any queries, please do contact us. Thank you for having a great, thank you and have a great evening.